Um, HSC revision, um, this, this little four step guide is how I encourage you, it's not just for maths, but there will be some maths specific things that I'm going to talk about here. Okay? So where does this begin? Uh, you've got HSC past papers, right? They're easily available. Does anyone know where to get them? The NESA website. website, right, good. So that's the first thing I'd like you to jot down. Now what I'm going to do real quickly is, uh, and this is why I asked if you have your laptop there to do this with me, okay? Just pull open your laptop, get a browser open, and let's just quickly do this because there are, most of it you can work out yourself, but some of it's not, not intuitive. So rather than uh, walk you through how to navigate the Nessa website, there's so much stuff on it, it actually can be quite hard to find what you need. The easiest way is just, just Google Nessa, HSC, past papers. That's, that's gonna give you the, the quickest way to get there. It's the top link right there, okay? HSC exam papers, the way Nessa has structured their website is that all of the subjects are all there um, in the same page, okay? So as you scroll down, it's a, whoops, it just reloaded. It's an alphabetical list. Now, the, one of the things you need to be aware of is uh, your course, of course, your course, of course, is called Mathematics Advanced. But you guys are the first people to sit the HSC for the Mathematics Advanced course. In the past, this course was called, does anyone know what it used to be called? Mathematics. Mathematics, full stop, that's it. Not a very helpful name, but that's what it is. So Mathematics is the one you're looking for, okay? Now what you'll see there is uh, many past years worth of papers. Um, there's quite a few there and we're going to, you know, we'll chew through them. Let's just have a look at last year's. Um, when you click on there, there's two important things you need to recognize. There's a paper itself that you can download, but equally important, some people are going to say more important, um, there's also the marking guidelines underneath that. Okay, so you'll need both of them. So you can go ahead and download these in your own time. Okay. Uh, yeah, well I'll just quickly show you, and maybe if you've, got your, um, if you've got your computer you can look at them yourself. Multiple choice is what it is, um, but then as you start to get into each of the um, questions, in fact let's go to a, a later one which has more marks associated with it, something more interesting. Oh that'll do, okay here we go. So this is a question where you've got to do some geometry in a circle, um, so you've got to do the cosine, there's some trigonometry, right? That's the cosine rule, I wonder if you recognize it there, um, a, b squared, etc. right? So what they provide you is a sample answer. There are many, many different ways, as you guys know, to answer a question correctly, um, but this is just an example that, yep, this is pretty much what we were hoping for a perfect response, okay? You guys have spent enough time um, as stage six students knowing that we look for those particular things in your solution. One mark, two marks, three marks, no half marks in the HSC. Uh, this is just a guide though, you should know that, okay? Um, it says sample answer. Every HSC year and cohort, they'll do it a little bit differently. So it's not like you can say, what, I obtained the length of the chord AB, that should always be the second mark. It's not always, but this is a pretty general guide, okay? So, coming back to your piece of paper, and I'll return to the Nessa website in a second, what I suggest you do is you make a schedule and you decide, uh, when am I going to do papers, right? You, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? So you might say, okay, every week I'm gonna do a paper or every three days I'm gonna you know, do some amount of time. You'll see me talk about that in more detail later on. Okay? Um, I'll come to that under the next point. Okay? Um, now, it's really important to know that your exam, it's on the 26th of October, easy date for me to remember because it's my mum's birthday. Now what that means is because today is the 28th of August, um, I went and counted. That's 59 days to go. Now, 59 days may sound to you like a lot of time or, or not much, depending on how much work you know you've got ahead of you, okay? 59 days, let's think about this, and this comes to Sarang's question. If you go back to this website, right, um, back one more page, 2019, it goes all the way back to 2002. That's 18 papers. Each paper is three hours long, so it's 54 hours worth of an exam. So, I'm not suggesting that you do this, but if you did an hour every day, and this is what you did, you'd finish every single paper on there. In fact, I'm gonna give reasons why, by the end of this, you should definitely be doing these papers in less than three hours, okay? And um, we'll come back to that in a second. So, um, one of the most important things to mention on this website, though, is that, as we just pointed out, these are the old course, the old course. So for that reason, I'm gonna suggest don't actually do one of these papers today. Instead, on your computer, instead of searching for, what do we search for? Nessa HSC past papers. What I'd like you to Google is this. Nessa Mathematics Advanced 
sample, okay? So Mathematics Advanced is your course, it's a new course. Nessa has only released a single sample examination for it. It's the top link right there. Um, when you go to it, the reason why this is important is um, at least two reasons. Number one, structure, totally different, okay? Um, see how you've got two sections here, there's section one, that's multiple choice. Um, that's the same, but then section two, we used to have this predictable, there's question 11, it's worth 15 marks. Question 12, it's worth 15 marks. That used to be the way it was arranged. Um, this is not arranged like that. In addition to that, it just looks physically different. For example, let's just scroll to section two. Um, section two will look like this, and hopefully we've been preparing you for this. Unlike old HSC papers, you will provide your answers on the actual exam paper itself. So there's all these lines there, okay? And we've been sort of, getting you in that rhythm, but when you look at all the past HSC exams before this, there's just questions, no space to write, you gotta do it on your own, okay? So you wanna get a sense of what this structure is like and also the topics that are in Mathematics Advanced that weren't there before, also the topics that were there before that aren't there now. Make sense? So this is where I'd like you to start. After I finish here, that's where I would encourage you all to go first, okay? All right, back to the piece of paper. So you got the papers now, right? What are you gonna do? Any guesses what the first word is there next to conditions? Come on, have a guess. Exam conditions. exam conditions, thank you very much. Or as close as possible to exam conditions. Now the most important thing um, is that it's timed. So you've got three hours for the paper, okay? Um, three hours is how much you should allow for yourself to do a paper, but of course we all know it's actually quite hard to find, to carve out three hours for yourself where you're not disturbed at all, and you can just knuckle down and do the paper. If you can't get three hours, then we'll, you'll have to do it in chunks, but please monitor it, right? You might get out the paper, you're like, I'm doing the 2018 paper today. Um, I went from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. I could only do an hour, and then I was like, I've got to go do whatever, go to work, X, Y, Z, okay? So please mark down, I did an hour of this, I've got two hours to go, okay? That way you don't lose track of what's going on, that's what I mean by monitored chunks. Um, if you can do three hours, do it, it's better. Um, please, oh yeah, Ashan, question? So I had a question, so yeah. you imagine you're just doing the exam, yeah? Yep. And this happens to me. I, I get stuck on a question. Mm -hmm. I just have to Google kind of the answers and what the process would be. What are you doing? I will come to that exact point okay. in about three dot points. Okay. So, uh, second thing, clear out the desk. Right. Make sure it is exactly like what you're going to be doing on the actual HSC. That means you've got your um, your actual exam pack in your plastic sleeve or whatever it is. You're going to have your water there. No books. No computer. No nothing. Okay. It needs to be just like you're going to encounter. What's the next one? What do you think starts with a Q? Quiet. Quiet environment. Now, I know we don't have 100% control, 100% uh, control over how much sound is in our environment, but you've got a lot of control. Um, here's a really hard one. It's hard for me personally, and I expect it's gonna be hard for several of you, but do it. No music. Now, I say this of myself first. I actually prefer, prefer to work with music. It's part, like I, I, I screen people out and all that kind of thing, and get in a rhythm. Um, why do you think I suggest you don't have music? Number one, in the exam, you will not have music. So you better get used to concentrating in the quiet of your own mind, okay? But secondly, and more importantly, um, and we've talked about this before, right? This thing in your brain that we call working memory. Um, working memory, it's made up of three components. Uh, and this is well researched, right? Um, the first component is what we call your visual spatial sketch pad, which is exactly what it sounds like, that you can, um, you can picture something in your mind. Maybe it's an equation, maybe it's a diagram. You hold it in your memory while you think about it, okay? That's the first piece. The second piece is something called the phonological loop. I'll come back to that in a second. And then the last piece is what we call the central executive. It's the fact that you're not just remembering some stuff, but you're actually manipulating it in your mind. And the central executive is what's doing that manipulation. Now I said I would come back to this guy in the middle here. Your phonological loop is your memory, not for things you see, but for things you hear, right? Now when you're reading a question, you're engaging your phonological loop. You're like, oh, there's uh, six months and I'm doing it quarterly and it's 4.2%. You're reading that all in your mind, right? And sometimes you can even hear your own voice doing that. Now your phonological loop, uh, it's, it's limited, just like everything else in working memory. And music messes with that real bad. Even if you don't feel like it is, especially music with lyrics. Um, even music without lyrics will still mess with that, but um, all music does. So, 
I'm going to ask you to develop that discipline. Like I said, I say this of myself as much as anyone, but when you're doing your exams, exam conditions, new music. Ishan's question was about, uh, I can't do a question. I'm going to reach for an answer. That's a very natural instinct. But in exam conditions, can you do that? Of course not. Okay, so that's why no consultation, you need to be disciplined on this. Three things that I don't want you to consult. Um, notes, and in that I include your book or, or the internet or whatever. Um, please do not consult the answers, right? I'll come back to that one in a second. Um, just as importantly, you're, you're sitting next to someone, maybe. I actually encourage people to study together if they can. But ironically, study together alone. Don't consult your peers when you've got a question and you're like, hey, um, Tavar, how did you do this question? Like, have you already done question 11? Tell me how you did it, right? Here's why, okay? Number one, let's talk about why you don't consult your answers. You look at a question, you're like, I can't do it. So you look at the answer, hopefully the answer rings a bell. You're like, oh, oh, I remember how to do this. Oh, it's the, um, it's the cosine rule or whatever it is, right? You fool your brain into thinking, I know how to do this question because you read the answer and it made sense. You don't know how to do that question. That's why you looked at it and didn't know what to do, okay? So you trick yourself by consulting the answers quickly. Um, and the other thing is the same with peers, right? You're like, oh, now it makes sense. And then you feel content and you move on, okay? Your brain does something different when you have nothing to lean on and you've just got to rely on yourself. So in this case, you said don't check the answers. What if you kind of see the process of how that question is done? Not until the very end. And you'll see why in a second. Like, we're not just doing this to get a general sense of, oh, that's helpful, I've got an idea of that. You've actually got to know what you can't do. That's a very important process of doing these papers, okay? Now, um, importantly, I said timed, three hours in total, right? However, you aren't doing an exam, so if you need more time, if you're like, oh, I hit the three hour mark and I've still got X number of questions to do, my recommendation to you is keep going, but um, record the total time, whoops, record the total um, time you did take, you're like, oh, it took me four hours or it took me four and a half, okay? What you want to do is get to that point where you're starting to bring that down, and that will happen with practice. You will develop fluency. You'll be like, oh, I've seen this question before. I don't need to think hard. I will just go for it, okay? So that's um, a record for you to show how far you've progressed. Um, I, I started at four and a half hours because it just took me ages to remember, and I'll bring it down to three, and we want to bring it past that as well. Okay, so you finish a paper, whether in one hit or in multiple chunks, then you've got a review. Super, super important. Now your instinct, again, will be like, I stopped myself from looking at the solutions, now I'm done, let's go there straight away. I encourage you not to. Instead, what I'd like you to do before you reach for the solutions is to make a record of the quality of the attempts that you made as you went through the paper, okay? Now, what do I mean by quality, okay? You've finished, there's your, um, there's your finished set of answers in front of you. You will already know there were some questions you just didn't even try. We teachers call that a non-attempt, right? You're like, I had no idea how to do this. I didn't even know where to begin, so I skipped it, okay? Um, I, you need to know, and so do we, you need to know what questions you didn't even know where to start on, because obviously you're going to want to work on those, right? Make sense? Record what you had non-attempts on. Um, record what you would call a low-confidence answer. Right? You're like, I gave it a go, but I'm like, do I think this is right? I don't know. I just gave it a shot. Okay? Um, your next level are the ones which you're like, yeah, that was hard. I call these the difficult but doable questions. Um, even though it was difficult, maybe you're like, oh, I screwed it up. I had to go back and fix it up. At least you can say, I'm pretty sure this is the right answer, and I hopefully I'm going to get confirmation when I look at the solutions. Okay? Yeah? Say it again. And then the last one is, well, I'm actually going to say, rather than confident, I'm actually going to say comfortable because you're going to get to a point where some questions you'd be like, I've seen this exact question before. They just changed the numbers on me, right? I can do this question and not only am I confident with it, I feel pretty good about it. I feel comfortable, okay? Now, when you do your first paper, you know, in about 10 minutes, okay? Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be a bunch of questions you're just not going to know what to do because the knowledge for that question you learned so long ago like 12 to 18 months or more, you're like, I'm, I'm just stuck, okay? Don't feel bad that you did that. But maybe if 20% of the paper, the first one you do is a non-attempt, let's try and make progress and reduce that percentage, yeah? By the end of this, you want that to get to zero, 
right? You at least want to put something on the page for every question, right? And what you want to do is get to the point where you have a higher and higher percentage of questions that you're comfortable with. Um, ideally, I'd love you to say 100%, but you certainly want to go from some lower number up to a higher number. That's part of how you will measure progress. Does that make sense? Okay. So. That's how you're going to, before you look at the solutions, record the quality of your attempts. Then, if possible, if possible, instead of marking yourself, swap it with someone else. Okay? Someone else is going to be marking a paper. You're going to be marking a paper. Why do you think it's more helpful for someone else to mark your paper rather than you? So they're not... So they're not... Oh, you got it We're generally kind to ourselves. We're like, oh, it was pretty close, right? Um, Max, are you going to say something similar or different? Same. Same. Anyone else a different suggestion? Have you ever come to a point where you came back uh, from an exam and you've gotten a question marked wrong and you come to Mrs. Lee's or me and you're like, but what I meant to say was this. Like what I was trying to do was this. What do we say to you when you say that? But you didn't show it. You didn't show it, right? I can't tell that's what you meant. I can't mark your brain. I have to mark your paper. Right? Now, by getting someone else to mark, you force them to do that. And the question you thought you'd done pretty well on, they'll say, nah, you didn't cut it, man. Like, I didn't see, like, from my brain, which is outside of you, I couldn't objectively prove that you understood this, okay? Um, and you will also benefit a lot by looking at someone else's working. You'll be like, oh, Shalita did it this way. That's clever, right? So, to do that, you'll benefit a lot if you can, okay? Um, then, lastly, it's been marked either by you or someone else. Please, like always, um, analyze your errors. And what that's going to do is it's going to direct, number one, the revision that you do. You'll go back to the homework that we assigned on your calendar and you say, ah, it's the trigonometry. That's the stuff I don't know how to do. Go find the exercise, review it. Okay? Um, and also, it'll direct at the, qu the questions that you ask us. Right? Um, please come and ask us for help. Do not be content. When you look at a question, you're like, I got it wrong. My friend who marked it told me what to do instead. And I'm like, oh, OK, I get it now. Don't stop there. If you just know how to answer that question, you don't really understand it. You've got to go back for the concept underneath, the skill. Okay. Um, on the um, back side of that page, you'll see something familiar. This is a page we've given you before. right? This is what I encourage you to do when you're analyzing your errors. It's why I've given you this framework many times in the past. Okay. Say it again. Did I leave one? Did I leave one what? Oh, that's not what it's meant to be. Hmm. Anyway, I'll come back to you in a second. Okay. Um, there's one last thing you have to do. You found the papers, you did them, you marked it, you've reviewed. What do you think the last thing is? You need to reward yourself. Okay. Now, this is really important. This is really, really, really important. Your brain has this thing we call the dopamine center, right? Which is the heart of motivation. You will do things that are hard if you know that it's worth it, if there's a payoff, right? We do this all the time, okay? You need to have some discipline here. You need to have perhaps something to reward yourself that you can't easily get yourself, because otherwise you, you'll just do it. You're like, I, I, think, I think it's time to treat myself, right? It needs to be something, maybe you give someone like uh, some food you love or some time or whatever it is, but you should do this. You've achieved something, three hours, a paper's not easy. If you've done it properly, give yourself a reward. Make sense?